I've been working in Ukraine, believe it or not. I've been working in Kiev and um, I've been actually working with the uh, Klitschko brothers, you know, the mayor of um, Kiev and his cute brother ages ago. I must say when they were still living in Germany and I had a super funny time with them and they're super intelligent, super nice people. And But besides that, I mean, this might be a personal reason, but um, I support Ukraine because um, you should support Ukraine. How can you, can you not? I mean, um, you, Ukraine is fighting for its freedom and independence, and I can totally relate to it. I mean, I would be an idiot if I don't support Ukraine. How can I support suppression, dictatorship, and homophobia? I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, I, I know a bit about homophobia, believe me. I can see with Ukraine that they don't want to live under dictatorship. And actually, no Ukrainian I know, and I know a lot of them, wants to live under Russian dictatorship. None of them. And this has to be respected and it has to be supported. Things kind of like fell to me and, and I believe it maybe is coincident, but I don't really believe in coincidence. And um, there was like all these things happening, you know. First of all, a friend asked me if we would um, help on main station to welcome refugees and I was first like, I don't know if I can do that because um, I might be too emotional and, and um, I might not be of any help. And then he said, yeah, you can do it. And he speaks fluent Russian. So I said, okay, let's give it a try. And then we did it. And um, it was quite a life-changing experience, actually, when you, when you hear the stories of people who had to flee their homes and you only meet them for a short time, but you kind of co connect with them and, and you think about your own life and, you know, and um, I never had to flee my home. I never got my, my, my town bombed. I never had to worry for my parents that they would be shot or for, for my lover that he would be shot in the army or something like this. So a producer phoned me from a, from a film production in Germany and, and, and told me about a project he's got for, um, uh, for, for the UN refugee agency. And he was looking for an assistant um, supporting her with wardrobe styling. And my reply was like, oh, why don't you send me the scripts and I, and, and I take a look at it and maybe I, I can find somebody. And I read it and I phoned him back and said, I'm going to do it. And he was like, what? There's no money in it, you know? It's like four nights uh, of shooting. It's going to be tough. It's like 60 people, wardrobe fittings and whatnot. Are you sure you want to do it? And I said, yeah, I am sure. It was quite, quite a tough ride, but it also was... Uh, it was an eye-opening experience because, of course, you, you get to know the people so close in the two weeks we were working. And um, you, you realize that, that every night they're on the mobile checking if their parents are safe and if their boyfriend is still alive or if their house got, got bombed. So all these war things get so much closer to you. And you realize what a privileged life you have and how dangerous it is. I realized it's, it's maybe not the right thing just to concentrate on the war, but maybe to go a bit further and concentrate on the time after the war. And I mean, now that Ukraine has the eyes of the world on it, it's the right moment, I feel, to educate the world about what Ukraine is about, you know. So um, I, I um, collaborate with Ukrainian people, also in the elevator shops, and um, I, I, I promote their art, I promote their fashion and in all of that because I, I think the world should see that. You know, I haven't seen it for my whole life and um, now, that, now that I have the chance to see it, now that I go to concerts with the Ukrainian artists and everything, I think I should use the opportunity to communicate about it. Well, actually, my first post about Ukraine was not on Instagram, surprisingly, but it was on Facebook, because I have on Facebook this series, I call it Notre Dame des Fleurs. 
and um, it's always on the market here in Kreuzberg and um, I normally dress up for, for it and um, then I stand with some flowers, I talk about the flowers and then I talk about the fashion and then I talk about what moves me, what I find important or tell something a bit more private or a bit more political or whatnot. Normally I would write like, like a lot of things about why I do it, but I just stood there with the yellow flowers and the blue and, uh, and I was just posting glory to Ukraine. No further explanation. There's a lot of like news in the beginning. People are like, oh, is, is Russia gonna, gonna attack Ukraine or not? And then there's like these stupid politicians on television saying, no, he would never do that. You know, he's peaceful. And the evil NATO, you know, they, they should be. And America is blah, 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 all this bullshit. And I was like, no, he is, he's going to attack. Ukraine for sure. I mean, just like he attacked Ukraine before when, when he yeah. took Crimea and part of the Donbass and like he attacked Syria, like he attacked uh, Georgia. And then when finally, officially, the war, or how Russia calls it, a special military operation started, um, I decided, okay, I'm gonna use my Instagram um, for, uh, for, supporting Ukraine, just using yellow, blue, just using flags and, and whatnot. And in the beginning, I kept it very simple and bold. And you, you can see on Instagram, like the first four weeks, it's very like simple. And um, then it kind of developed out of that because with all my engagement and other things, the more Ukrainian people I met, I got more um, involved into the culture to kind of like, first of all, show an awareness for the cultural background and the beauty and the riches. But also because I think like what we need to do now is like prepare for, for the time when, when Ukraine won the war, which is going to happen, and then use this to build Ukraine up, in, you know, prom promote the, the, the brilliant um, power of design Ukraine has, you know. So, um, this is also a perfect opportunity to look further than where we are at the moment. I'm not doing it in a, in a way like a, you know, like a showroom dummy or something. It's, it's not my cup of tea. So I turn t-shirts around, I, 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 I do whatever I want with it. And I'm very spontaneous also. I, I mean, sometimes I have a picture that I took in the evening and I plan to post it in the next morning. And then I wake up to news. I had this a couple of times and then was in the, in the news something like an attack of the city or something. And I thought like, no, I can't post it today. It feels wrong, you know, when I have like a happy um, gay couple picture with Ukrainian symbols. I thought like, no, it's, it's insensitive if I post this. I should reflect what's happening and draw awareness to that. And um, of, of course I get a lot of response. And I would say like 98% is positive which is huge. But then again, I was, I was on Russian propaganda television a couple of days ago and what, what they did is like super evil and disgusting. They, they ripped photos from my Facebook and also from my Instagram. They didn't ask me if they can use them, which is actually a crime, you know, and um, they just used them and, and put them together to, to slur about um, my homosexuality, saying like, okay, if Ukraine is supporters like that, they don't need enemies. And uh, look at this guy, this is the um, corrupt West who wants to put his gay propaganda on our pure Russian spirit. And, um, you know, poor Ukraine is suffering from these, um, you know, gay mafia agents whatever. We should not forget that Russian Orthodox Church, Cyril, were, is promoting the war on Ukraine by saying like we have to save poor Ukraine from gay parades, the poor country is going to be polluted with, with the gay propaganda and agenda. And I mean this is a person from the church, you know. And you, you would think like, okay, there's somebody really mentally um, destroyed. But it, it, it's really, it works. 
you know, you and, and Russia is famous for that with their uh, homo propaganda laws. And when you only have access to this and and you only see that you think um, you think like even people I worked with were saying like, no, you have to understand, Frank, it's about the children. And it was like, what? I mean, I was a child as well, and I was growing up in the in a super straight household, in a super straight surrounding, in a super straight school, super straight church. And I'm the gayest person you can meet. So how did this happen? To my surprise, I don't get any homophobic comments from Ukraine. Really not. Which, which I thought like, wow, that's... Now I'm proud of Ukrainians. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very proud and, and it's a contrary. And actually some messages I received I was like, oh wow, I didn't even recognize me because, I mean, my Instagram, besides like being supportive of Ukraine, showing Ukrainian symbols and whatnot, also, it's, it's super, super gay in the face. I mean, you can't mistake it. Of course it's gay, because, because I'm, uh, I'm a gay activist and I wouldn't know why to, why to, why to hide that. I'm not going to be straight because of Ukraine. It's so hard to live a life in closet because you lock so much up that belongs to your sexuality, to, to your personality. And I mean, the democracy begins with sexuality, let's be honest. So it's, it's, if you want a happy society, you have to build a society where everybody that is based on equal rights for everybody. Learn wir untereinander zu diskutieren ohne zu verletzen. Learn wir Solidarität wirklich zu leben und gerade, gerade queere Menschen, und das fordere ich ein, müssen den Kampf der Ukrainer um Freiheit und Unabhängigkeit wirklich verstehen und wirklich tatkräftig unterstützen. I, I think the victory is not so far away. And I, I mean, of course, it's, it's my belief and my hope, as well, but, but I think Zelensky is doing a great job. And I, and I totally agree, everything should be Ukraine. You know, Donbass has to give him back, Crimea has to give, be given back. I don't believe in these shallow compromises, because shallow compromises mean if you, give, if you leave Crimea to Russia, it means that Russia is just waiting, collecting more energies and attacking again. Russia needs to be defeated and go, and, and that's it. I bought a lot of T-shirts and sweaters when the, when the war started, we were doing brilliant design. I really love them. And 100% of the profit goes to Ukraine. So I bought tons of stuff and gave them to people I work with, but also to friends and used them a lot in, in, for the elevator shots. And they, they said like, oh, wow. When my pictures got attention, they say like, it's great. You're like an ambassador for our brands because I always tag everything. And um, it really shows in, 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 in sales and, um, um, we increase our sales and I thought, oh wow, that's super cool, I love that. And then they contacted me like a month ago that they want to do a special t-shirt with me and, and um, they would call it the Frank Wilde t-shirt. And I said, perfect, yeah, let's do it. I think what Ukraine should know is that despite all the, all the horrible news about people getting tired of it, about politicians saying like, mm, it's, it's enough now, don't send weapons. They should know there's a lot of awareness as well. And there's a lot of media attention as well now to people who don't agree with this, who say like, no, we support Ukraine with all we have. And um, my message for Ukraine is you're, you're seen, you should stay strong, you should be proud of yourself and you should be proud of your country. It's worth defending it against evil. And um, I, I feel like the whole world is on your side. I mean, at least the whole free world. You know, I can't speak for Russia, but um, I think everybody with a bit of brain and with a, with a bit of knowledge of freedom and independence is supporting Ukraine, of course. It's the only thing to do. I, I really can't, I mean... Yeah. Bye! Bye.